Well, we're going to finish up Mark chapter 13. A lot of verses. I bet you're, you're holding your breath in anticipation to get through chapter 13. It starts with the temple and the disciples making the comment how ma magnificent it was, the structure, the stones, the building, and Jesus kind of blindsided them with the reality knowing that in another 40 years, there's not going to be one stone left upon another, that Jerusalem will be destroyed and the temple will be destroyed. So he shares, and that's what this passage comes out of. This is part three of the temple in the end, because the disciples, like all the other Jewish believers, believe that if the temple was destroyed, then the end of the world was present. It was all over. And so here, in a genre of literature known as apocalyptic literature, this is the little apocalypse that Jesus has in chapter 13. He's using language that we're not familiar with unless you've studied it. You'll find it in Daniel. You'll find it in Revelation. You'll find it in other places in the scripture, just short uh, references and phrases. But here we, we see that he's doing that. And as he's doing it, he's weaving in not only the destruction of the temple, but also his coming, the coming of the Son of Man, which, once again, they equate with the end of the world, the end, uh, the eschatological end of all time. So here they are. We pick up in verse 24. But in those days, following that distress, Okay, that gives us a clue where we are. This is after the destruction of the temple. Jesus is talking about in the days following the distress, the destruction of the temple, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. <clears throat> Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it's near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about that day or hour. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Father, we ask that you would release your Holy Spirit in a way that would give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive what you're saying to the church. Amen. <clears throat> but in those days, following that distress, the destruction of the temple, here he goes. The sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. What's he saying? His concern is that the believers would be deceived. That with the proclamation of false messiahs and, and all the different kind of falsehoods that would be coming forth, he wanted to make sure that it was absolutely clear. The destruction of Jerusalem, there's going to be Seasoned. There's going to be signs. There's going to be things that give you indicators, like the fig tree, which we'll get into in a minute. 
He says, those, those are going to come. You'll see. You'll have an awareness. You'll know that Rome is about to destroy Jerusalem and the temple. How, the abomination of desolation. When, when you see the sacred being totally disrupted by the pagan, you'll know that it's there. Now when he's talking about the coming of the Son of Man, he says, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't spend all your time trying to figure out when the second coming is. Don't get your maps and your chronology and 88 reasons why in 1988 the Lord's going to return. Don't waste your time on that. His whole point is, as we are waiting for his return, we should be busy about our Father's business. Period. Don't waste your time on that because when it happens, it's going to have a cataclysmic, cosmolic, cosmological uh, announcement. No one's going to think, oh, was, was that what he meant? No, the heavens. You're, you're going to see things in the sky. You're going to see the sun, the moon. You're going to see the stars. You're going to see... It is... Nobody's going to miss it. I don't know if the trumpet will be a coronet, a, a, a bass trumpet. I, I, but when the blast happens, we'll all hear. You don't have to worry. He's, he's telling his disciples, don't waste your time. The destruction of, of the temple, here's some, here's some things to kind of let you know when it's coming. Okay. But the coming of the Son of Man, nobody knows. So, so relax. Relax, because when he comes, it will be the most awesome thing in the world. Why do you think the sun and the moon and the stars all? It's because of the presence. It's the glory. It's the glorious presence of the Lord. When he comes, all of creation in the universe is going to go bonkos. It's going to be spasmic craziness. Everybody's going to know when he comes. So don't, you know, well, he's come. The Messiah's come again. Oh, really? I, well, yeah, so-and-so, he, he's a prophet. He, he says, that, you know, the Lord came and he's over here. The Lord made it clear in his word that it's not going to be anything that should catch any of us off guard. It'll be something that you will see if you're in Africa, Australia, Europe, Asia, North America, South America, Central America, wherever you are, it will have such an impact that the whole world will know. Believers and unbelievers, everyone will see it. So don't worry about it. Don't spend all your time trying to figure it out. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with power and glory. Glory seems to be a theme, along with Jesus today. Mm -hmm. And he will send his angels because of his love and compassion for all his believers. And they will gather from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. All will be gathered unto the Lord. Wow. Now that's the end. That's the second coming. That's not Jerusalem. 